Okay. Sorry, let me just make it go quiet. <laughs> Take your time. That's it. All right. Yes, sir. Good evening, John Lord. Hey, Hi. how are you doing? I'm fine. Um, I'm from Metal Express Radio yep. on the Metal Express dot website, and I plan a couple of warm-up questions. But there's one thing that would interest our listeners the most. And after you left the purple, you talked about planning a reunion with past and present former uh, former members of the Deep Purple and Deep Purple family. Do you, do you have any good uh, news on that? It, it was very interesting. It, it's it, it was a marvelous way of um, what you might call an example of how the internet can blow a, uh, a, a glass of water into an ocean. Um, it, it was an idea. Uh, somebody asked me in, a, in an interview, um, would you ever play with these guys again? And I said, love to, of course. You know, most of them are my friends and they're all, no one's an enemy, you know. Mm. Um, and uh, I said, wouldn't it be fantastic if you know, and the const that was the construction I put on it. You know, it, w it would be marvelous if we could all uh, play together again. You know, um, five minutes later, it was you know, this is John's plan. Uh, you know, and um, uh, I'm, yeah, I don't, I can't take responsibility for it. It's now. It was just, it seemed like a good idea. You know, just at the time. It, uh, so don't take the responsibility to make this happen. Uh, <laughs> no, it, I, I think the one who will get it to happen is Richie, don't you? I mean, yeah, yeah. I mean, he'll be. Yeah. All right, yeah. yeah, he'll be the one that, that calls everybody up and says, let's do this, guys. Yeah. So it won't happen then? I, I think not, no. <laughs> uh, I, I, a couple of, it's interesting because the way it goes around the world so quickly, I've already had a, David Coverdale call me and said, uh, I'm in, yeah. I'll do it. You know, <laughs> yeah. uh, Glenn Hughes, yeah, I read oh, I'll do it. Uh, Ian Gillen said, not in a million years. Um, you know, so that's, I think it's already been shit upon from, from from a very great height you know yeah. it's a, it, I don't think it's going to happen but it's a nice dream yeah it is uh, one more question you played in uh, many different places from halls to hangars to uh, uh, stadium arenas yeah. and everything and now you're playing tomorrow on the 14th of September in uh, a cathedral in Norway yeah. Yeah. Um, what does that mean to you on a personal level play, playing in the yeah, a house of God uh, it's actually quite quite a nice thing uh, I've played in churches before. Um, I, I suppose I am a reasonably spiritual person. I'm not. I don't. I'm not a Christian. You know, like sort of. I don't. Although I wear a cross, but I mean, I'm, I don't uh, go around preaching or anything. I just have my beliefs and I keep them reasonably quiet. Um, so to play in a in such a wonderful uh, space, it's not the great thing about cathedrals and churches. It, it the space has. The space talks to you. I mean, it's, there's usually hundreds and hundreds of years of people's hopes and dreams and, and sadnesses and happinesses, and, and it's where people go to uh, to, to get comfort uh, or just to get in touch with something that they might not be aware of. Um, and that's something in the same area that music can do. Uh, that music has that spiritual quality as well. I mean, even the heaviest rock music can. can uh, can touch people in a, in a way that just mere talking can't. So, so uh, I'm really looking forward to it, and it's going to be a. a it, it's a privilege to play in yeah. such a, a beautiful space. Yeah. There will be a lot of people there uh, arriving because you are the former member of Deep Purple, mm -hmm. and not, they probably not got a lot of classic music records in their collection. What do you think about that? Well, they're missing something. Aren't they? <laughs> <laughs> um, it's, this is not classical music. This is. Uh, the, the part of me uh, that, that, that uh, is the other part of me. I'm, I've, I've said this before in interviews, but I'm I'm a very schizophrenic uh, musician. You know, I, I'm I'm a Gemini, and it shows in everything I do. You know, I'm, I'm I love uh, rock music. I always did. Uh, I love uh, orchestral music. Always did. And when I found one, it didn't push the other out, and vice versa. So. Um, then I tried to put them together and occasionally succeeded and sometimes failed, And uh, but I had fun doing it. And now I've left the band, it's time to pursue that side of my career. So I would say to them, as long as you uh, have uh, open ears, you know, which is an old old saying, but keep your ears open and uh, your heart open and, uh, and you know, and uh, don't come with any preconceptions. Mm. Um, it's not smoke on the water, but then, you know, not everything is. It seems like you are enjoying what you're doing now, but uh, 
did you enjoy play playing Harvest Star, Smoking Water, the last hundred times you did? I don't honestly believe that there's been a single time I haven't played, certainly Highway Star, that's a great song to play. I mean, it's got a marvellous organ part. I don't know who wrote it. Um, <laughs> but uh, uh, Smoke on the Water occasionally got a little tiring because it's not very interesting to play. You know, it's, it's, um, but it's, a, it's a damn fine guitar riff. Um, it's one of the best, but, but, but occasionally, you know, that, that one got a little old. But uh, I can't honestly believe that there's anything else I ever played in Deep Purple that I didn't thoroughly enjoy. I had the best 35 years that a man could get. I think. Same to you. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Well, Should we try another one? Slip it in. No, one more question. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, John. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Cheers. It's a pleasure. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Monster magazine. Ah. Um. Good question. Uh. It's a a piece I wrote for um. Piano and orchestra. Uh. I was asked a few years ago if I would write something for uh. The Luxembourg uh, Philharmonic Orchestra uh, to play. And because I'm not the quickest musician in the world when it comes to actually writing stuff down, it takes me a long time. I like to, to take my time. The, the deadline came and passed, you know. So, but I had this um, these ideas, and I read a poem by by a, an English writer called D. H. Lawrence called "Piano," which was about a young uh, remembering being a young boy and listening to his mother play. And <coughs> And a lot of other things like that, but about the past, you know, and so uh, that uh, affected me very deeply. And in the poem is the line: uh, "Sitting under the piano in the boom of the tingling strings," describing the the sound that would be like sitting under a big black grand piano, you know, that that sort of shaking. So that's what the phrase means, I think. And um, it sounded like a good title for a piece of music. So I took what I had been writing for Luxembourg, and. Uh, made it into uh, a, like a piano concerto, which I can't play, so I made it, it, it was my revenge on, on concert pianists, uh, to, to, to make them work hard. Uh, and it, it got its premiere in uh, March, I think, uh, in, uh, no, February, in uh, Brisbane, in, with the Queensland Orchestra, and then it, it uh, was played in Luxembourg in May. Short question, long answer. <laughs> okay. Thanks. Rasmus, uh, will, will there be a recording of it? Uh, yes. Um, I'm negotiating at the moment with a couple of record companies to find their, you know, their good young lions. You know, 24-year-old piano player who's so good it makes me sick <laughs> uh, to play it. You know, and, and to, to record it. Uh, it so yes, it will be recorded. So is that is that your next? No, not really. It, it, it's that's a kind of a, a, a side thing. I mean, I, I, I now I've got the time, uh, which is something I had been asking the band for for the past few years, but that, that, that's not what they wanted to do. Their, their vision was different to mine. Uh, they just want to tour. Um, Ian Gillen doesn't ever seem to want to go home. So I mean, you know, I don't, I don't know uh, why that is. Um, but uh, now I've got the time that I didn't have. I can, I have a little more time to to pick and choose the. the uh, I'm very lucky, you know, because Deep Purple's given me a, <coughs> excuse me, give me a cold. <coughs> <laughs> uh, Deep Purple's given me a, a a reputation and a and a name of sorts, which I, I'm able to use to open a few doors. Um, it makes me very lucky. Uh, and I intend to, as long as people remember that and have that in their minds, I intend to open those doors uh, and to shout at people and to, to, to get things done that I didn't have time to do before. So that's fine. What would that, what would that be? Um, I want to go on holiday, Rasmus. So I'm opening the door of a travel agent. No, <laughs> uh, no I, um, I, want, I want to make another solo CD. Um, which I've written most of and uh, should be in the studio with before Christmas, I hope. Um, there's a possibility that I might also uh, use the Trondheim soloists on a, on a two or three tracks because we, 
we, we've talked about that and that seems like a reasonable idea. So I'd like to make another CD, uh, perhaps a little bit less melancholy than Pictured Within. Um, or that it was very heart, very deeply felt music. Uh, I, I intended every note of it, um, but it came from a time of my life when I, when that's what came out. Um, I, I think I'm a little happier than I now than I was then. Uh, so maybe the music will reflect that. Um, and I want to continue to write for other people. I'd love to write more songs. I, I want to write more with Sam Brown because she writes great lyrics, and uh, I don't. It takes me forever to write a set of lyrics. The, the ones I'm most proud of is Pictured Within, and that took me about four years before I was absolutely convinced that I had a decent set of lyrics. Um, so there's, there's quite a lot of things I'd like, I'd like to, to do. I'm sorry I'm talking a lot, but you, you stop me with a question. <laughs> yes, sir. Yeah. Uh, you know the, the black box you used to have at the top of your panel yes. in the beginning of the 70s? Yes. Which you don't use anymore. Right. Can I buy it from you? <laughs> <laughs> if you can find it. <laughs> I think it's at the bottom of the Hudson River, just outside New York City. I don't... I don't know. I think it, it fell to pieces. It, and, and the people who made it stopped making it. It was, it was a, a ring modulator made by a company called Gibson. Not the guitar manufacturers, but a, a small electronics company. Uh, it was a great thing. And I bought three, and they all died. Um, rest in peace. Uh, but I can't find. I mean, there, there must be a, a digital ring modulator, but, but digital's not got that oink that that, that uh, this had. That's what it was. It was a, but if, uh, yeah, as I say, if you can find it, you can have it. It's, it's Come and look in my attic. It's strange how <laughs> destroyed because you always treated your equipment so nice. Of course I did. I was very yeah. gentle yeah. with yeah. the Hammond organ. Yeah. You know, it's, it's, <laughs> I think the Hammond organ was very, very happy when I started to get older. <laughs> Thank God he's left me alone now. You know. <laughs> so. okay. uh, you uh, started as, uh, with classical music uh, 15 years old. Mm, five. Then, uh, five. Five years old. Mm. Then uh, 35 years of the purple and now uh, more like uh, classical music. Mm. Do you feel that the uh, ring has closed? Um, it's, it's a thought, isn't it? Um, no, because in a way, in a way, the, 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 it's, the circle's still open. Because, because what Deep Purple I tried to say before, what Purple did for me was was immeasurable, beyond price, beyond uh, any dreams that any young man might have had. Uh, it, it took me uh, around the world. It, it, it gave me a great living, and it. As I said, it opens some doors. So no, there's, there's still work to be done. But uh, it's, a, it's a nice thought. But I'm not ready to retire yet. I mean, everybody said, oh, John's retired. No, I haven't retired. I've, I've just left the band, you know, and there's, the, there is life after Purple. Well, I, I hope there is. Touch wood. <laughs> <laughs> Any wood about? Yeah, there you go. <laughs> you still uh, going to write uh, rock music? If one comes to me. If, I mean, I was never a great rock writer, you know. I write well with other people. Uh, I enjoyed co-writing with, with Ian and Roger and, and Richie. Um, but you leave me alone with a, with a piano and, 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 a, and a mind, and I won't come up with a rock song, I don't think. I would never have come up with the riff to Smoke on the Water in a million years. Be because it, it, it doesn't uh, sit well, or it didn't until I found out how to play it, you know. Uh, um, that was one of the most fascinating parts of my life, was, was tr trying to make the Hammond organ sound like a rock instrument rather than sound like a jazz and blues instrument. Uh, and I, I think I did, you know, in the end. I got there. When you uh, choose uh, the Nidaros Cathedral to play in uh, the part of Hell in the why did you choose the church in Hell? Uh, we, we were going to do it, but it wasn't big enough because because the, the, if we put the Trondheim soloist in the church in hell, then there's no room for any audience, you know. So it's, uh, now it was a, the original idea was to play here in the church, and then I'm not going to say whose idea it was to go into the cathedral because he's standing just over there, and and uh, and he can explain it for himself. Uh, but it was a wonderful idea, I, I, I thought, because it's a, as I tried to explain before, it's a beautiful space. Uh, it has an amazing feeling. And I'm very much looking forward to it.
to doing it. You're welcome. Sir. Um, again, if you believe uh, the internet, uh, you might find that I've been thinking about it since 1967. Uh, um, but, but not really. Uh, I uh, actually first had major thoughts about it just before the concerto tour, about at the end of '98. I wrote a, a letter to it because it's easier with, with that lot uh, to write letters because then it's in black and white, you know. Although as England sang, it ain't right just because it's in black and white. But 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 I wanted it on the, on the record that that I really believed uh, that the band could tour less and 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 uh, diversify its members' activities more. I misread the situation as far as the band is concerned. They honestly didn't believe that, and that's fine. I mean, there was no there were no fights about it. We hadn't really had a fight since you know 1986. So it's a uh, quite boring really you know, no more spaghetti in the face you know none of that it's, it's gone very quiet um, so that's when I first started thinking about it and during the tour with with the concerto in 99 uh, in uh, end of 2000 did we start that I guess um, I had a moment where I was sitting in a bar talking to Bruce our manager and um, I, you know I said I've really got to think about moving on at some point. At some point. In Gillen and Roger were sitting on the other side of the bar without me knowing, and they saw this, and they must have read something on my face. And they rushed out and went, John's leaving, he's leaving, ah! You know, and it all sort of went pear-shaped and stupid, and, and there was 24 hours where it was crazy. Um, we managed to get that back down to, to earth, and but at that point I said, yeah, I really, really want to leave. Uh, but I want to do it uh, warmly, uh, with friendship, uh, with love, with uh, timing, you know, uh, at exactly the right moment. And that's what we were going to do, and it was all going very well until we all got flu. And we had to cancel my uh, swan song tour, uh, which confused the issue even more, you know, so... And you know the rest. I mean, then that's why we decided when we came back to redo those concerts that uh, that Don Airy should should not step out again. I mean, because he, he he was like he was on elastic, <laughs> going in and out. So um, so that's why we came up. I think it was Ian Pace who came up with the idea of Don playing the first part and then me sort of popping up like sort of magic puppet, you know, uh, uh, halfway through the set. Does that r roughly answer it? Yeah. I was yeah. just wondering, what, is, what are your feelings about the last year uh, I don't think there's been a more emotional night in my life. Uh, it was... Um, I, I could even burst into tears now thinking about it. It was, it was very, very, very difficult indeed. It's been my life, you know, every second of... Uh, from uh, 68 to 76 and then from 83 uh, and t until uh, last year. So it was... It was hugely difficult, uh, but very warm too, because the audience was fantastic. What wonderful, wonderful uh, warmth came from that audience. I mean, I can't tell. If I could bottle that and sell it, I'd give you all the formula and we'd all be millionaires. You know, that's it. It, 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 if, if you just knew how to recreate that feeling, you know, it, was, it was fantastic. Wasn't it? it was wonderful. Very, very happy. Next. Okay. Oh. Yeah, you've been writing on a couple of... Uh, the tracks on the new Deep Purple album, but, mm. but do you have listened to the rest of it? Yes, I have, yeah. yes. What do you think? It's not what I expected, to be perfectly honest, because it's not what we were writing when I left. Okay. Um, it, it, I, I think it's very good. I, I'm not... You see, I, it's, it's not my job to criticise that, but I will give you an opinion, if, if you remember that it's only an opinion. Um, I don't think the sound's very good, but to be perfectly honest. I thought, I thought Roger would have done a better job producing it, but there you go. That's just, that's me, and, and Michael Bradford is a, a rather large black chap, and he's going to sit on my head now, and I know that, and, and, and hurt me. Um, um, a, a couple of the songs surprised me. Uh, um, 
I can see why they put it on, but um, that never a word, is it? It's lovely, but it just starts to get going and it stops. So that worried me slightly. I mean, uh, but it's in the same area as, I suppose, the aviator and, and fingers to the bone and that kind of thing. Um, I think the opening track's fabulous. I, I, obviously, I like the two that I was involved in writing because, <laughs> you know, because I was involved in writing. Um, Generally speaking, I, I don't think it's the best pur Purple album ever, but I think it's better, to, uh, better than Abandoned, uh, which to me had no sense of direction. I don't think it's as good as Perpendicular, which I thought was the, probably the best Purple album, al along with In Rock, Machine Head, and Perfect Strangers. I thought that Perpendicular was right in there. I was immensely proud of that album, or still am, immensely proud of that album. But I, I've got a feeling in my bones these old bones of mine are telling me that this is going to be a successful album. It feels, the time feels right for them. So, and it's really strange to say them, and not <laughs> us. But, uh, but for how long do you think they will continue to be a problem? Well, until the battery runs out. You know, I mean, it, 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 <laughs> it, it's. Uh, I I know Ian Gillan's uh, views on this, which are very strong, and. I, I, I endorse his views, you know, that there, there is no reason why rock music shouldn't be paid by people as they get older. It's, it, it's the music that belonged to them when they were kids, and why shouldn't they take it with them as they get older? You wouldn't, you wouldn't say to a jazz musician or a blues musician or a classical musician that they couldn't play it because they were getting older. Um, so I, I don't see any reason at all why, why they shouldn't go as long as the intent is there. I hope, I hope they keep the, the faith uh, that we always used to say that was, that was when, when we got when we didn't believe what we were playing anymore that we'd stop and I hope they remember that because no one understands uh, the fact that a band is is not doesn't have its heart in it better than an audience an audience knows like that and it, it as long as they remember that then then they'll, they'll do just fine will they survive another lineup change I wouldn't have thought. And why would they bother? I mean, if they're not happy with what they got now, I mean, then, then, then if it ain't broke, don't fix it. You know, I mean, it, it, it's Steve is an astonishing guitarist uh, uh, and, and has done just the most generous job I can think of. Um, and it's been misunderstood in some quarters. People say, well, he's playing Richie's thing there. You know, he meant to do that because it's, he's always felt like, for example, the, the parts in Highway Star. People say, why doesn't he do his own thing? It's because that's part of the song now. It's down in musical history, you know, that's that's part of Highway Star. So he's a very generous and wonderful player, and I miss playing with Steve enormously. He was great to play with. That will never happen again? Well, if, if Don gets sick, you know. <laughs> 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 yeah. Okay, Steve thank you. John, <laughs> 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 it's a pleasure. <laughs> yeah. well, have a quick some words around what you're doing now in the cathedral. Um, well, thank you, Mr. We'll PR man. That's <laughs> <laughs> Are you anything to do with, with the festival, by any chance? No. It's a spare time. Um, well, it's, it's, it's kind of music I've, I've played before. I did a small tour in Germany uh, three or four years, five years ago, whatever it was. Um, and it's much of that. Uh, plus some few new bits and uh, and a much bigger string section that's about it but it's um, as I say it's music that's very close to my heart and it's and it's music that I genuinely believe ha has a has a home uh, and it's the kind of music that it's very difficult to get people to understand unless they come and hear me do it it's very difficult to, to and again the reason we have music and those little dots it's so that I don't have to sit here and explain what it's all about, you know. So I play it to you, you know, and then I'm, I'm not getting at you all. I'm just getting at the world in general. You know? I'm doing that. It's difficult, you know, to explain music. It, it music makes its own case. It it, it uh, gives you its own argument. And uh, all musicians uh, would ask is is that pe as I said before, is that people come with an open heart, an open mind, and open ears, and uh, and an open wallet. <laughs> <laughs>
It can't resist it. You know, it has to have a joke at the end. No, it's... It, 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 uh, I think... Uh, I think I'm going to get drowned out by this train, is what I think. <laughs> <laughs> I think this uh, is our answer to Jean Michel Jarre's background. <laughs> <laughs> it happens every year. Fair and it's the only time of the year we see this train. <laughs> That's true. Really? Yes. Yeah. While you're waiting, you might, please, if you do it. Sure. <laughs> okay. Not it, on the top of Moody and Marshall. I was just going to say before the train came by that I th this is what this <laughs> this is what I want to do with my life so I'm going to keep doing it if, and if and the only hope is that, that I can convince people uh, that there's more to life than the sound of a train. <laughs> uh, you know, there are many kinds of music, and I, I, I'm really trying hard to take, them, take the labels off, you know, and just let's have a nice big spectrum that says music, you know, and, and you can dip in anywhere you like, you know, you can... You can go in here and find Tchaikovsky, you can go in here and find Jimi Hendrix, you can go here and find me, you can go over there and find Ken Hensley. You know, you know, it, it, it's, it's, a, it's a huge playground uh, and uh, it, it, people should be encouraged and I'm going to do my damnedest to encourage people to keep, to keep this, this open mind that I keep talking about. Enough said. Thank you all for... Uh, Shall we start the autograph session? You cheeky bastard. <laughs> <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Thank okay. you very much. Thank you. Okay. God bless you. Thanks for good, some good questions. Thank you. I appreciate that. You got a? Okay. Oh, you wanted? Yes. What is that? That's part of a hammer. Yes. It's a reverb it's thing. Yeah. There it goes, sir. Thank you. If I just can borrow that for two seconds. There you go. Thank you very much. I believe that's yours. Yeah, it's yours, eh? Yeah. Right, okay, right. <laughs> Give me a big piece of paper and I'll sign big. <laughs> oh, nice. Cheers, my friend. Thank you. Thank you. What have we got there? For the piano. Yeah, that's you want, what, on each? Yes, yeah. it is. Thank, Thank you, you very much. You're welcome, mate. This is the last. <laughs> 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 I use this big one. Thank you. You're more than welcome. As for a Hammond organ playing friend of mine, it's uh, called Arna. You can okay. just write like, yeah. keep on playing Hammond. I certainly will. Yeah, yeah, big thing. Thanks a lot. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Can I come on? Yeah, I'll try here. Yes, I know. Oh, but I did work. Thank you. You're welcome. Cheers. What's that say? Tron. T-R-O-N. I'm a fan from 69. Okay. Yes. Thank you very much. You're more than welcome. John, you can just do that. Oh, yeah, sure. Yeah, we'll find it. Thank you very Do you remember the conversation? Wow. Yeah. That was, uh... Bloody hell. No, I don't remember the conversation. Who was... Who were those young men? Eh? It's a strange thing being, you know, in a, in a position where you've been photographed all your life. 
it, it really does bring it home to you just about, about the passage of time, I yeah, tell you. Yeah. That's for me. That, that's a, a double name. Yeah, okay. E-R. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. I'd like you to make an ID for Metal Express Radio. Okay, dokie. Okay, whenever you're ready. Hello, everybody. This is John from Deep Purple once, but not anymore. Wishing you a wonderful day and uh, lots of fun with Heavy Metal Radio. Metal Express Radio. And it's not Heavy Metal Radio, it's Metal Express Radio. You better get that right, because I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> you don't get many ideas like that, do you? <laughs> oh, okay, one second, let me just uh, do that. That's that. <laughs> Heavy metal radio. Now there's a thought. <laughs> Oops. Yes. Ah, that's lovely. That's almost that's me. <laughs> oh, Picture with it? Sure. A picture with a picture. <laughs> a picture within. <laughs> picture within. Yeah. Very good, yes. <laughs> Very good album title, don't you think? Yes. <laughs> Cause we're moving a little bit closer. We're coming closer together, the two of you closer together. One. Okay. We've got to get That's him in as well. Big <laughs> <laughs> big, big smile, so look at me. I love that. I wish all photographers did that. <laughs> yes. Okay. That's not a Still camera, is it though? Is this 25? So we don't have to stand still. In, in, in one, <laughs> in one second. So 25 pictures. In Just one a second. thought. <laughs> yeah, right. Okay. Yes. Okay. The same. And the for us. For us. Okay. Uh, bring it to you if you can sign our page. Sure. Okay. Yeah. When do you want to do Okay. Yeah. 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 Yeah.